This is second part of videos describing a possible application of all optical magnetization switching as recording mechanism for high-speed optical memory, in which I will talk about the benefits of high-speed photon-to-spin demultiplexing. In order to discuss a possible application of all optical magnetization switching for high-speed optical memory, it's necessary to compare all options for the high-speed optical memory. At present, a high-speed optical memory is made by combining two components. A high-speed photodetector, which converts a train of optical pulses into a train of electrical pulses. And conventional electrical memory, like DRAM memory. The speed of photodetector is larger than 100 GHz, meaning it converts pulses with a period as small as 10 picoseconds. The clock frequency of advanced DRAM memory can be as fast as 10 GHz. Additionally, the photodetector, electrical demultiplexer, electrical data processor and DRAM memory can be integrated into one very small chip. The parameters of a possible new memory, which would be based on the, f on the effect of all optical magnetization switching, should be at least comparable and hopefully better than this already existed high-speed optical memory. Next, I will discuss the feasibility of each mechanism of all optical magnetization switching for usage as a recording mechanism in high-speed optical memory. The first mechanism is a switching assisted by external magnetic field. This mechanism is based on heating of the ferromagnetic metal and therefore cannot be fast. The heating due to the absorption of optical pulse destroys the magnetization of ferromagnet. When a ferromagnet is cooled, its magnetization is aligned along the external magnetic field. The heating and cooling are famously slow processes. The fastest time scale of cooling is a few mi microseconds and the high-speed memory needs to operate a million times faster in time scale of few picoseconds. The second mechanism is toggle switching. Even so, the origin of toggle switching is more complex and fancy, still this mechanism is based on heating of the ferromagnetic metal and therefore cannot be fast. In the case of toggle switching, only one of two magnetic lattices heated by optical pulse and destroyed. During cooling, the magnetization of this lattice is aligned along the internal magnetic field. In fact, this mechanism is very similar to the first mechanism. Only difference is that in the first mechanism is the cooling and alignment occurs in external magnetic field. But in the second mechanism, the cooling and alignment occurs in internal magnetic field. Similar to the first mechanism, the long, the long time scale of the cooling limits the recording speed of this mechanism. It is very unlikely that this recording mechanism of toggle switching could be used in a high speed memory because of its slow speed. The recording speed of combination, combination of the detector plus DRAM is faster and therefore a better and simpler solution for optical memory. The short optical recording mechanism is based on transfer of the angular momentum from light to spin. Since, since it does not require any heating or cooling, the mechanism is fast. This mechanism is not averagely fast, but very fast. In the next slides I will explain why this mechanism is exceptionally fast and how to use this unique property of the spin for extremely fast optical recording. Next, I will discuss a possible application of all optical magnetization switching for fabrication of high-speed optical memory. The ultimate purpose of any optical data transmitting system is to send the data package from one memory chip to another memory chip. The larger number of data can be sent in the shortest time interval, the better. A magnetic memory is key memory for data processing. Using all optical magnetization switching, it is possible to record data into the magnetic memory by a short optical pulse. Is it sufficient to fabricate an efficient high-speed memory? Answer is that it is not sufficient. For operational high-speed memory, additionally a high-speed demultiplexer 
is required. Let me explain. Additionally to the storage of data, there is another very important function of high-speed optical memory, which is called demultiplexing. The demultiplexing means that each data of train of short data pulses should be recorded into individual memory cell. For example, the pulse number 1 sh should be recorded into the memory cell number 1, the pulse number 2 should be recorded into memory cell number 2, and so on. It is critically important that neither the preceding nor the following pulse should have any influence on the recorded data. For example, pulse number 1 and pulse number 3 should have no effect on the data recorded in memory cell number 2. Considering that the interval between pulses is extremely short, it's not a simple task, and this is high-speed task is done by the multiplexer. Optical memory consists of high-speed demultiplexer and several memory cells. The task of the demultiplexer is to send each pulse of the chain of many data pulses into an individual memory cell, ensuring that other pulses have no effect on that cell. The required operational speeds of the demultiplexer and the memory cell are very different. The demultiplexer should be very fast and be able to switch pulses within time interval between two neighbor's pulses, which is a one picosecond in this example. However, the recording speed of each individual memory cell is not necessary to be so fast. It could be just slightly faster than the repetition rate of the chains of data pulses, which is about 100 picosecond in this example. Next, I will explain the demultiplexing principle based on the optical spin excitation. The idea behind this demultiplexing principle is simple. A, so a socially polarized optical pulse excites spin polarized electrons and therefore is recorded into the magnetic memory. In contrast, a linearly polarized optical pulse does not excite spin polarized electrons and therefore has no influence on the magnetic recording. Two types of optical pulses are used in high speed optical communication. The first type is data pulse and second type is clock pulse. The clock pulse is used for synchronization. It selects one pulse from a train of data pulses for memorization. The data and clock plus pulses are linear, linear cross polarized. When two pulses are combined, the resulting pulse are socially polarized when the phase between pulses equal a quarter of wavelengths. One specific data pulse can be selected from a chain of data pulses by using a different delay of the clock pulse. For example, at this delay only second pulse is socially polarized. As a result, only 0 or 1 data encoded in this pulse is recorded into the memory cell other data pulses remain linearly polarized as therefore have no influence on the recording. In the case of a longer delay of clock pulse, the third data pulse is selected. The polarization of only the third pulse is socially polarized and therefore is recorded, while other data pulses remain linearly polarized and have no influence on the data recording. This slide shows the multiplexing scheme for multi-cell memory. There are two input for the data and clock pulses. At the first memory cell, the clock and data pulse combine so the first data pulse becomes socially polarized and therefore the data of only the first pulse is recorded into the memory cell number one. There is a delay for the clock pulse so that at the second memory cell, the second da data becomes socially polarized and therefore the data of only second pulse is recorded into, me into the memory cell number 2, and so on. It was measured experimentally that this multiplexing scheme is able to do the demultiplexing for the chain of the data pulses with a period as short as 100 femtosecond. You may wonder why there is a speed limitation for this demultiplexing scheme. It should be infinitely fast because its operation principle is simple and straightforward. A socially polarized optical pulse excites the spin, and the linearly polarized optical pulse does not excite the spin, 
The event output is just yes or no. There is nothing between. It's not entirely true. In this example, the delay between two linear cross-polarized pulses equals, for example, 50 femtoseconds. And the combination of these two pulses excites the spin. It is experimental fact. You can see that in this case the light is only linearly polarized and there is no so-called polarization at any moment of time. Still, this pulses excites the spin. This effect occurs due to a congruent interaction of photo-excited electrons. In fact, each linear polarized optical pulse excited both spin-up and spin-down electrons in equal amount. Since the amount is equal, within a short time, the electrons are mixed up with other electrons, and in total there is no spin transform into an electron gas. The phase between the wave function of photo-excited spin-up and spin-down electrons is fixed. A pulse of different direction of linear polarization produces a pair of spin-up and spin-down electrons of different phase between them. For example, the phase difference is zero degree for this direction of linear polarization and 180 degree for this polarization. The remaining spin polarization, which is excited by two consequent optical pulses, depends on the delay between pulses. When the delay is long, the spin up and spin down electrons, which are excited by each pulse, are dissolved within other electrons, electrons of the electron gas and there is no spin transfer. When the delay is short, the spin up and spin down electrons, which are excited by each pulse, interacts coherently according to the phase, resulting in spin transform from optical pulses to electron gas. This animation demonstrates this effect. In the case of a short delay between optical pulses, the spin up and spin down photo excited electrons remain in their mutual phase and therefore interact coherently, which finally results in a remain remaining non zero spin polarization. In contrast, in case of a long delay between optical pulses, the spin up and spin down photo excited electrons lose their mutual phase before the second pulse arrives. The there is no coherent interaction and no remaining spin polarization. I would like to emphasize that it is an unwanted effect which is slowing down the multiplexing speed of this mechanism. Fortunately, the relaxation time of this effect is extremely short. It's called the dephasing time. I have measured the dephasing time in gallium arsenide. It equals 450 femtosecond and temperature 70 Kelvin. The phasing time is even shorter at room temperature. The details of the measurements you can find in this publication or in this YouTube video, the link to which is in the description below this video. The phasing time is very short because it's just time until the photoexcited electrons interact with many of the neighbor's electrons in electron gas. Generally, such an interaction is individual for each electron. Therefore, the interaction of either spin-up or spin-down electron with neighbors leads to a loss of their mutual phase. To the end of part number two, if you are interested, please go to part number three, in which I will discuss how to increase the efficiency of spin conversion from a photon to electron and about a possible magical material for an efficient photon to spin conversion. You can find the link to part number three in, descri in description just below this video.